Hi, well, welcome to a new tutorial about composing with Buck and Cage. Uh, a tutorial about uh, the Cage library and the Buck library package, uh, rather, in Maximus B. Uh, it's been a while since I last did uh, one of these. Actually, the first one I did was a few months ago, but um, I hope now it's going to be a more constant flow of, um, of tutorials. Today we're going to look at L systems. Um, an L system is a uh, Lindemeyer system, uh, takes the name from a botanist who found a way of predicting the behavior of uh, plants uh, based on certain rules. So an L system pretty much works as like given one input uh, on the next generation it will be substituted by something else. So in this case a 1 will be substituted by 2 and 3, a 2 and th a 2 will be substituted by a 1 and 3 and so on. And you can see how this, um, uh, this kind of uh, algorithm produces a never-growing um, output. Uh, so that's um, something that um, it's easily implemented uh, using a cage object, the cage object being um, uh, chain, cage chain, and um, of course, like um, we can always go to the L file and see how that works. So the way an L system works is that I have to give the system a rule. In this case, uh, uh, it's in this format, so with a parenthesis which is very characteristic of the Bach and Cage um, syntax. And so I have the E will be substituted on the next iteration by an E, F, and an E. And the F will be substituted by three Fs. So if I input that rule in, and then I uh, set what it's usually called the axiom, so the first cell that will begin, begin the generations. So the first generation is an E that will be substituted by an E, F, E. And then uh, the generation after that, we will have the E that will be again substituted by an E, and F, and E. And the F will be substituted by three Fs, and so on and so forth. So if I um, uh, say, give me one generation of this, um, of these rules, I will get, I have to give it the axiom first. I will have the E. And then if I want five generations of this, uh, that's where you get a never growing result. Okay, how is this helpful uh, for, uh, for music composition? Well, this defines, we can actually use this to create rhythms and to create um, patterns of note. So in this uh, tutorial, I'm going to use a very useful object, which is the back roll which um, accepts onsets on the second inlet and then uh, sends, which is pitch values in midi cents on the, on the third inlet, and then durations. So we're going to use cage chain to generate both rhythm and to generate, generate notes. And let's say uh, I want my uh, rhythms to be um, Mm, to be of this kind. So I want um, uh, an eighth to be substituted by two sixteenths and an eighth, for instance, and then I want a quarter note to be substituted by, um, let's say, an eighth, a sixteenth, and um, I don't know, another quarter note. And then I want um, uh, a sixteenth to be substituted by um, two sixteenths. All right, uh, and that's my rule. Um, uh, and then I want to have like an initial uh, value, which is um, say an eighth note. Um, let's um, divide this by a certain 
number of milliseconds since my onsets which are my rhythmic values my rhythmic um yeah my rhythmic values are um expressed in in uh in milliseconds then i might want to um have a division by say 1000 so uh the eighth uh will be um the 1000 divided by 8, uh, 16 divided, 1000 divided by 16, etc, etc. And here we can see how we already have some interesting feature of Bach because um, this nested list of parentheses will be processed by this uh, exclamation point division and, re and output as one list again with the cor cor correct nesting expressed. So now I have this value expresses 125 milliseconds, 62.5, 250, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. I don't need to do anything for that, and I can also use this as my input for um, my axiom. So we can uh, actually uh, write this in a comment: rule uh, rules, and then uh, axiom. Um, and then, and this is pretty much uh, my uh, rhythmic um, structure for for this um, experiment. And then, as far as the notes are concerned, then I can have something similar. So, a message that says, if I have an A, give me a G and a C and another A. If I get um, a G, give me a C, and, um, and uh, give me a C and a G, no, sorry, a C and uh, A, let's leave it at that, and then um, if I have an a C, then why is it capital? If I have a C, then give me a um, two G's. That's okay. And this is my rule for my um, my uh, pitch um, pitch content. So actually here that's lambda. So, um, and I want to have also an axiom, which can be, say, a G. Uh, so for this, I need to do something slightly different because I need to translate these values into, I need to translate these values into um, MIDI sense. So it's not just MIDI, it's MIDI values multiplied by 100. Uh, it's an old-fashioned way of using MIDI values. Okay, let's. There is a, a object to do that, and that's called N2MC. I'm not sure this is going to work uh, like the other one. Let's just see. Yes, it works nicely. So I can just use that to translate that in notes, and uh, do the same for this. Okay, um, another thing I need to do is to wrap, wrap these outputs into a parenthesis because the uh, way the back row wants these lists are as um, in, in a list of, uh, wrapped into a parenthesis. Um, but um, you can see how here you actually we need to do an extra step which is if i print this up uh, into let's first see what's happening here so i send the rules here i send the axiom i can start producing generations of this chain uh, by just sending bangs into into um the chain so i have the first generation second generation third generation if 
is not a great rule because it's only giving me uh, 16 notes so uh, let's change this up a little bit um, to let's do four and eight here and start over yeah now I have a little more of a variety of values uh, but these are all onsets that will start uh, will be all uh, uh, stuck at the beginning of the um, of the roll. Well, what I want to do is actually to spread them out so the second value will appear uh, after the first one. Uh, the f f second note will will be offset by the value of the first one. The third note will be offset by the uh, value on of the first plus the second one, etc. And again, we have a nice object here to do that, which is uh, dx to x, so um, which is a difference to the uh, the sum of of all of the values in the list. So, if I have um, a list of, of values, say m one two three four five here, and I want to start from zero, and I print this, um, then what I will have is a every value in the list will be offset by the sum of what's coming in before, right? So that's what uh, it's uh, helpful to use in this case because I can just um, see what's happen what, what happens here. So uh, I need to send the thing in and then trigger it with, uh, with the zero, with my starting point. And now all of my values are uh, sequential are not um, stuck at the beginning so that's good uh, and so this is going to be my onset and this is going to be my pitch uh, so I need a bang 3 which uh, starts this this let me first, let's do a bang four. So four, first I will uh, just send in all of my uh, rules and axioms. Then I will generate something. And then this, whenever I'm done, I'm ready to bang this, right? So no, I need, I need a bang three. And lastly, I also want to use these as durations because uh, without, uh, and I do need to wrap this also. Um, okay. So the reason I'm sending, oh no, I, I was right. I do need a four because um, after I send everything in, I need to build, I need to build the back roll and the back roll needs a bang to, in order to build it. So I can send in all of these values, like the onsets, uh, the midi cents, and then the durations. And then when I'm done sending everything in, I can send the bank to the roll and build the, uh, the score. So this is going to be proportional uh, notation, no bars. So this is my first generation. Oh, I'm, I, okay. I, if I send the rules again, then it will start always from the beginning. Say I send the rules first with a load bank so that I'm sure that something has been sent in. And then I can start producing my score. Um, Clefs auto 
will give me a more uh, appropriate uh, distribution and then I can create an easy MIDI play And uh, this is not a great composition, of course, uh, it's pretty simple, but it has the behavior of um, um, L system in a way that it has, is, it has self similarity within it. Um, it's not random um, and it's following some simple rules and you can grow very large very fast. Of course, here we are only using three values and the uh, rules much be, might, could be much more complex than that. Um, so that's it for this tutorial and I hope to be able to put uh, to record another one soon. Thank you for following. Uh, you can subscribe, uh, leave comments, uh, likes, etc, etc. Thank you.